All right, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. Today I'm gonna to do a get ready with me. It's gonna be super extra. We're gonna do my hair first. I have one piece of hair curled, so I wanted to test the barrel of the wand to make sure I was into the curls that, you know, I wanted. Um, I don't know how this video is gonna turn out because I have this microphone sitting in front of me. Are you recording? Yeah, you are. Because I got complaints on my audio. I did this thing on Instagram where I asked you guys to give me feedback as in regards to like, you know, what you guys wanna see or what I could do different in my channel. And a few people said my audio, so I'm trying out this mic and hopefully it works. But um, anyway, we're starting hair first because this hair company is sponsoring this video. This hair is from Supernova Hair, and they sent me five bundles of 32 inches and a 20 inch frontal. Now the reason why the frontal is 20 inches is because that's the longest they have in frontal lengths, whatever you wanna call it. And so, um, I mean, it's cool though, because I feel like it kinda like gives, I guess you could say some body or some, I don't know, I like when, or like a layer type of look. I like it when the, the top is a little shorter than the back. I feel like when they're all like one length, it looks more like unrealistic. However, I have not cut these bundles. I posted on Instagram and everyone's like, don't cut them. So I won't just cause you guys asked me to. But what I decided to do is wand curl it cause I want some waves going on. Now I get to the front part of the hair. And by the way, you can see the front right here. This is not glued down. This is just the wig. I don't know what I did differently, but it just came out perfect. And so originally I actually wanted to film a video on me constructing this wig. However, I ran into some problems and I guess I'll get into, I guess the pros and cons of this hair because there are some. And so, um, but before I go into that, I'm wanting to curl this hair because I want to just, you know, get more body. I'm going for a certain type of look, so. We want to be very extra today. And what's more extra than a 32 inch curly hair but anyways um pros and cons so the pros of his hair well i'll say one that it's curling really really well i wasn't sure if this was going to curl well which is why i did like a test one first and so it's curly really well it's very easy to curl um i'm interested to see how long these curls last however i kind of want them to fall into waves so i don't mind if they don't last the longest but point is this hair can take a curl may not look like it but let me go to my arm these look really, really nice. Back to pros and cons. Another pro is that this hair has really nice luster on its own, and it also could take bleach. So this company, this is their second time sending me hair, and the first video that I was originally gonna do, I flopped it because I wanted it to be a nice blonde color, so I bleached the hair, but I left the bleach in too long and I completely damaged the hair. Like, long story short, I bleached this hair, and I decided while bleaching to go get Chinese food, which is stupid. And when I came back, it was just like, yeah, it, it wasn't gonna work out. Um, but I say this to say that this hair can take bleach. So I tell you it bleached to like damn near platinum. Um, yeah, it could take some bleach, just not too much at once or else it's butchered, which is what I did. And so um, they sent me a second set of hair and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna bleach your diet because I don't wanna risk messing it up again. Not that I couldn't have done it differently this time around, but I just didn't want, I didn't want to risk it. And so um, I just kept it in its natural color, but it can bleach, it can not take dye. So cons, there's only one con that I've noticed that really, really annoyed me. So like I said earlier, my original plan was to make a video on how I construct this wig. And so when I construct wigs, I do this thing where I, um split the tracks and that makes the wig lay flat. Now this wig is laying flat, but I'll explain how I did that. And so I like to split the tracks. At first I used to split the tracks only at the very top and splitting the tracks, so you have a track and you just get like a little blade or even a knife and you just cut it because usually tracks, they'll be single wefted, but there's like two pieces to them. And I prefer doing that because I feel like you get more hair. It lays flatter, um, it just, I love doing it. And so I've learned recently that I like splitting the tracks all the way through their entire wig because I just feel like it looks really, really natural that way. And so I tried to split these tracks. Now these wefts, I'm, I'm not a fan of how they were constructed because I feel like they were almost sewn together too tight. So that's a plus because um, that means you get less shedding. Uh, when the, the weft is constructed really, really tight like that, the hair typically won't shed on you. However, it's not a plus when you wanna split them. And so the tracks themselves, they were sewn really, really tight together and they were pretty, um, for lack of a better word, they're kind of stiff. And so I kind of struggled with trying to, uh, 
work with them. Like they were easy to work with, but they were just more on the stiffer side. And so when I got to the, ooh, come off the one. When I got to the top part of the hair, I was able to finesse it and I was able to split one of the bundles. So I was able to like, pretty much usually when I split tracks, I like to run the blade straight through, just through and through, super easy. But this one, it took me like a good 20 minutes to split the whole entire bundle because I had to really take my time. Because if I moved too fast, um, it would rip and break, if that makes any sense at all. And so that's the only con. Um, it was kind of frustrating because I did want to make a video, like a thorough suit. I actually started to film it, a super thorough video on how I make my wigs. But the tracks, like it just was, yeah, it, it was a no-go. I didn't want it to be... Um, yeah, no, the, this this specific hair was gonna work for the kind of video I was gonna do. And so that's the only con I would say. Other than that, the hair is perfectly fine. The frontal, I bleached the knots and they're beautiful. The frontal itself is like the perfect density. It's not too dense, but it's not too thin either. I did not even customize this. I mean, of course I made my baby hairs, but I didn't have to pluck it to make it thinner, which is what you typically have to do with frontals. And so the frontal itself, I really, really love the frontal. I bleached it twice, which is why I do it most of my frontals. I bleach it once, you know, to get most of the knots. Then I go back in a second time to get like the remainder knots that didn't bleach. And so um, the frontal is honestly my favorite out of this hair. But other than that, uh, yeah, the only con I would have is me not really, me struggling to split the wefts. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion. So if you've tried Supernova hair before and you would like to give your feedback to anyone watching this video, your comments are always appreciated. Because I get sent a lot of hair, and not even because I get sent a lot of hair, but because I like to switch up my hair so much, I'm not able to like always wear these wigs for a long period of time to give like a super duper thorough review. And that's my fault, and I'm gonna try to work on that because I'm gonna stop taking so many hair deals. But until then, if you work with any of the companies or like, you know, order hair from any of the companies that I'm working with, if you could just give your opinion down below, that's always super helpful. Um, because I mean, yeah, someone may want to buy this hair and may want more than just my opinion. So like I said, if you have an opinion on this, comment down below. And so I'm gonna keep one curling this hair. I'm gonna speed this part up because I don't want this video to be super long, but then again, it's a get ready with me. So those are, it's okay for those to be long. Um, but I'm just gonna hurry up and do this cause I wanna be forever. Ugh. I can't wait to be done. I feel like it's gonna be really, really pretty. Then I do my makeup. I'm gonna force myself to step outside of the box for a makeup look, you guys. And so I just, I have good feelings about this look for sure. All right, so I'm gonna just continue to one curl this hair. And then I'll check back in when I'm done. All right, so I'm done curling my hair. The hair looks beautiful. Like, ugh. look how pretty that looks. Look at it. It's so soft and just so just, I'm happy I haven't cut it. I'm not going to, I don't wanna get attacked, but it's just so like, I feel like a princess. I don't know, but time for makeup now. Let's beat our faces. I need to fix my closure part. Well, I mean, it doesn't look too bad, but 
I need to put some like black eyeshadow over here. So if like the wind blows, it's not obvious, but we'll do that later. All right, so someone's lawn mowing outside. That's so annoying. Anyways, to prime my skin, I'm gonna use this Fenty Beauty Primer. Focus camera. One of my favorite primers. And I'm going to just rub that all on my skin. All right, for foundation, I'm gonna take my NARS Dear Glow and I'm in the shade Tahoe. The bottle's dirty, do not mind that. Uh, why is NARS so great? This is my empty bottles. I have like four of these, let me get my full one. This one should have some. I know I should probably throw, is this my other empty one? Oh my God. I know I should probably throw away the empty ones. I just, I don't feel comfortable throwing away things that are NARS because I really value NARS. I know this one's crazy, but I just don't want to throw it away. I know what I could do. Duh. Just use a stick. Obviously, we're gonna get our money's worth. Make sure I get all of that. Genius. All right, and I'm gonna blend that out really quickly using my Fenty Beauty sponge. I'm feeling flawless already. All right, to conceal, I'm taking my NARS Creamy or Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Biscuit. I'm gonna blend that out using my Morphe sponge. All right, that looks good. Now to contour, I'm gonna take my Ben Nye Olive Brown Foundation Palette. Looks like this. And I'm just gonna take this shade right here. I originally bought this for my kit. But you guys know I'm no longer freelance, so might as well use it on myself. I'm gonna use this brush from this Beige Cosmetics set. Looks crazy right now. Oh my god, it looks nuts. This is probably a little too dark, but it's cool. I don't really trip when I mess up during cream contouring because I could easily blend it out and fix it with the same sponge I used to apply my foundation, so I don't panic. So now I'm gonna take my Laura Mercier translucent powder and I'm going to get some of that on the cap. Take this other Morphe sponge, just have like a finer tip to it, more flimsy. And I'm gonna set using that. And I'm gonna do one layer first to set it. Like that. And then, I'm gonna do another slightly thicker set to catch my powder, um, my powder, my eyeshadow when I do that. And I like this sponge, cause you guys see how it's so, it's kind of like flimsy and very flexible. It's really great for things like this. Cause it doesn't apply too much pressure. Ooh, all right. So now I'm gonna go do one off camera because I have no idea what I'm doing yet. And then I'll be back to the other eye. All right, guys. So I did one and a half camera. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of impressed. Um, you guys know I never really do look like this, kind of, cause it scares me. Not gonna lie. Um, when I was starting to the bottom, typically speaking, when I do do some color up top, I'll I want to say like that up top. I'll do like orange or play it safe on the bottom eye. I never do it like this at all, like ever. But it looks good, look, and I'm, I'm excited, so let's do it. So to prime my eyes first, I'm gonna use this Urban Decay Primer Potion. Feels good in focus. There it be, there it go. All right, so I'm gonna prime my eyes with that first. This is so expired. I got this like a long time ago, but I'm gonna still use it. All right. 
and we are gonna just rub that in with our fingers so i'm gonna be using two eyeshadow palettes today the first one i'm going to be using is this new one by urban decay it actually just came out yesterday i believe and i love the packaging like it looks like this has a mirror and then if like it's like perfect i don't i can't explain it it is called the beached eyeshadow palette and so that's where you see the blue most of the colors are in this palette however i did need my morphe uh 15d palette to assist me and that's why i needed some orange shades like you know to blend and make it look better and so i'm gonna be using these two palettes and so first i'm gonna find my brush all right first things first i'm gonna set my primer with my translucent powder i'm just gonna brush that all over my lid like so all right and then i'm gonna go into my 15d palette i'm gonna take in the crease I actually like the name right there. And I'm gonna use that first. I'm just gonna brush that all over my lid. Yeah, the reason why I don't do super intricate eyeshadow looks is because um, I haven't like mastered my technique, but I'm discovering, oh, I'm gonna take the shade editor. I'm discovering that the more I do it, the better I get. So I'm just gonna have to like, force myself to continue to do these kind of looks until I just, feel comfortable and I'm better because I haven't necessarily mastered my technique. This is my favorite Morphe brush of all time to do shadow. It's the Morphe MB23 brush. Um, I've had at least like five of these. I feel like if you're a beginner in eyeshadow, this brush is really, really amazing for that. Um, I don't know, it's just foolproof to me, although I'll be messing up, but it's great. And so from this Urban Decay palette, I'm gonna take the shade Daybreak, which is right here. I like this palette, however, this is the only matte in the palette. Uh, I wish there was at least like, you know, two more mattes, maybe like a brown matte. However, I do understand they have, you know, their other naked palettes that have those shades. So it makes sense as to why they, you know, swish up a bit. It's really pigmented though. That's like a YouTuber's favorite word, pigmented. And so um, what do I do next? This is why I need to start doing my eye on camera because I always forget my steps. All right. So I'm gonna do things a little different. I did this eye a different way, but I'm trying to learn from my mistakes. So before I put any of the blue, I am gonna add this brown. It's called Mauve. And I'm gonna add that to the outer corner of this eye, just to, you know, make it a little darker. I did that on this eye. However, I did it after the blue and I feel like mixing the brown on top of the blue made it look a little muddy. It looks good still, but I'm just trying to find the best and most effective way to do my eyes all right so oh god drop my brush yes come through i look all right so next i'm gonna take this pencil i have by mac it's diane kindle's spring summer collection it's limited edition however it's blue and i use it as a base uh not my favorite however because i did on the other eye i feel like i can't skip this step on this eye because it may affect how it looks color wise and so I'm just gonna put that on my eye and blend it out my finger. And you won't be able to even see this blue once I put the shimmer on top. It's kind of just like a base. It's not really the neatest product I've used. Now I'm gonna take this flat brush by Laura Mercier. It is the cream eye detail. And I'm gonna take the shade Plunge, which is this darker blue. And I'm gonna Ooh, the little sticker on this palette is actually still on. Let's rip that off. And I'm gonna pack that on top. I use a brush first. I'm gonna go on my fingers soon. Okay. Then I'm gonna take this small Morphe brush. This is the MF06. I'm gonna take the same color and kind of blend it upwards and kind of fuse it with the first few colors I used so it, the, the line doesn't look harsh, if that makes sense. Then I go back in with the first Morphe brush I used, which is the MB23, and just blend that all together. I'm really working on my blending. And then I'm going to take the shade Double Dip with my finger, which is like a slightly lighter blue, and I'm just going to pack that onto my lid. Like so, it's super easy, right? And then what I do next, I remember what I did. 
I just, what brush did I use? So then I took this Laura Mercier brush. This is the smudge brush. And I'm gonna take the same liner um, that I used as a base earlier and put some down the brush. And then I put that underneath, well, kind of my waterline, lower lash line. And I brought it all the way in. Typically, I get scared when it comes to this kind of thing. I have to like close up my eye, but it looks really good. And blue eyeshadow is trending right now, so that kind of inspired the look, especially when I got the Urban Decay palette. I was like, I'm gonna just do some blue. This looks so nice. And then I'm going to go back in with this palette. I'm gonna go back in with the, um, the Morphe M506 brush. I'm gonna take both the blue colors I used earlier and put that on top like that. And then what I should do first, but I totally forgot, I'm gonna take Daybreak, which is the shade, the matte shade I used in this palette, and just dust that underneath so it matches the top part of my eye and it's not just, just a thick blue. Looks more smoky like that. My apologies. Yeah. When did I say Google? When did I even say? Anyways. Oh my god. All right, and that's pretty much it for the eye look. And I'm gonna put on my lashes. And so for lashes, I'm gonna use this one by the Velour. Um, this is their Effortless Style favorite lashes to date. Well, top five, because nothing beats New Bounce, um, Bristol and Russian White. Those are still my favorites. So I'm gonna use this Duo Lash Glue. Not my favorite, however, I cannot find my Velour Lash Glue, which works really, really good. So we gotta stick with Duo. And while I wait for the glue to get tacky, I'm gonna take this Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. It's supposed to be infused with the M word. I'm not gonna say it, because I'm not gonna risk it demonetized. I'm gonna put a coat of that on my lashes. Not gonna go too crazy and put a little bit on my bottom lashes as well. I feel like, okay, I just got kind of disturbed because I'm realizing that this look is super similar, damn near the same to my Wild Thoughts look. Although like I'm gonna do a completely different lip color, I just realized that like I use the same backdrop and I have done a blue look like this before. So we gotta switch it up. Um, yeah, we're gonna switch it up. I don't, I, I know how we're gonna switch it up. I'm gonna put this lash on first just so whenever I alter this this other eye, it's kind of like being altered at the same time. But we're gonna switch it up because I'm not gonna do the same look. I don't wanna get roasted. Although I feel like this video is gonna be more informative than my Wild Thoughts look. I'm still gonna, you know, switch it up. These lashes are really great. They apply very, very easily. I did not have to cut them. I didn't have to measure them. They're literally effortless. They're amazing. Definitely worth $30. I definitely feel like this is my third, no, this is my fourth time wearing them actually. So um, I'm gonna get a lot of uses out of these. This is like my fourth time wearing them and they're, they still feel brand new. They still look good. I haven't had to clean them or wash them yet. So that is a plus. That's pretty. All right, switch up time. All right, so I'm gonna take this Violet Voss palette. I'm not gonna show it, because well, I'm gonna show it, but one of my shades broke. And I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. This like greener shade. I'm gonna see what that does to see if that makes a slight difference. We just need a little something to make a little difference. I'm gonna put that on the inner corner of that. I like that. Okay, I took this shade called Pearl, which is like this white iridescent shade. Put that on the inner corner. So we need to make a difference in this eye look. And I feel like that makes a difference where like it doesn't completely affect the eye look. Like it still has a vibe I'm going for, but it's not also something I've done before. That's freaking pretty. Got all over my lash band, but I'll fix that later. Yeah, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, that works for me. 
All right. Now time to finish the rest of my face. All right, I wanna try to hurry up because I want to. So to set the entire face, let me slow down. To set my entire face, I'm using this Laura Mercier translucent powder, but this is the shade like medium deep. And I'm gonna take this Morphe E42 brush and I am going to just dab very roughly on my face. Do you guys see how when I dust the powder away? I'm not even done yet, but you see how it's not, it doesn't look bad, it doesn't look cakey. It's because the trick I did earlier where I did one layer first, that way, um, so I feel like when you set underneath your eye and you're essentially baking, when you start off with one thick layer, um, we just press it. It's sticking to the foundation um, versus when you set with a thin layer first and then you put powder on top of that. The powder you put on top of that is no longer sticking to your skin. It's sticking to that first layer of powder, which makes it easier to dust it off, which is why I do what I do. So, yeah. I'll take this Sigma Tapered Face F25 brush to really get underneath my eyes. Make sure it's all dusted away. So to bronze, I'm gonna take my Tarte Hotel Airs, which is like my go-to bronzer. Bronze skin, put some underneath my chin. <laughs> that rhymed. And I'm also gonna go in with Hula Bronzer by Benefit as well to further contour. This hair, all in my face. Maybe I should. Put it back, that might be helpful. I'm also going to contour my nose a little bit. I'm gonna take this Laura Mercier brush. It's the all over eye, but I'm gonna use for my nose. So I cannot find my nose contour brush. So I'm just gonna do like a light contour, nothing too heavy. Just define my nose. I'm also gonna define my cupid's bow. Then I'm gonna take this Sigma large powder brush with this NYX Pink Patown blush. And blush up my cheeks. So for highlight, I lost my highlight brush. So, hmm, I'm gonna use Whisper Guilt by MAC. I just got it, it's brand new. And so, I'm gonna do a a little brush of highlight first, and then if I want some more after I set my face, I will add more. I wish my cheeks were oily. That sounds weird, but I feel like the highlight sticks so on my nose because my nose has some oil to it versus my cheeks that are, are dry. All right, so for lips, I'm using Chestnut by MAC, but I don't want to be too dark. So I'm putting it on. Then blend out my lips. And I'm also gonna take my finger and put a little highlight right there. Not too much, but. Then I use these two Urban Decay lipsticks. I wanna use one of them at least, or maybe both. So this shade is called Heat Wave. It's a bronzy, orangey shade. Use a little bit of that. And then there's a shade called Tower One. And it doesn't show up too much because I swatched it on my hand, but I feel like it'll make a slight difference. And of course, you know me, I need a gloss. And I'm gonna use White Russian by Buxom. Let's see how good this microphone is. No, fail. I love mixing colors. I don't think there's ever been a time where I just use one color. That looks super nice. Okay, so now set my face using this MAC setting spray. It's a Fix Plus pink light. Has a nice little shimmer to it. Yes. I wanna wait for that to dry. I'm gonna use some of my Strobe Body Lotion because why not? I got it, might as well use it. Oh, this freaking hair, there's so much hair. Let me 
got all on my shirt. I'm just gonna wipe that with the napkin. I'm not tripping. It's this hair that's in my way. Oh, it's like very pink. Wow, I didn't think that this would be as pigmented as it is. I definitely underestimated you. It's definitely showing up. I don't know if it's picking up on my camera, but it's definitely showing up. Let's bring my hair forward. Let's zoom the camera out a little bit so you can see everything. There we go, that looks better. Am I forgetting anything? I like my eyes, I like my lips, I like everything. So that's it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna change my shirt because I'm gonna take some photos and I'm probably just gonna like be showing my hair. Uh, if I do change, it won't be till later. I don't think I'm gonna put a different shirt on. You know what? I am. Yes! I put on this black sheer shirt I have because I lost it for a while and I just found it so I ran away. But this is the final look, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Show me love. Share this video with friends if you want them to see it too. I like how this look came out. Um, I really tried to step in my comfort zone and not do something boring. Now that I finish this look and I feel like it looks really good, it's gonna inspire me to do even more looks like this. I'm just so happy that I actually sat down and filmed. Filming is super hard for me, uh, but I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get into that in another video because if I do it now, it's gonna turn into a rant. So if you enjoyed this video, like I said, um, give this video a thumbs up, please subscribe. And if you would like to purchase this hair, be sure to look at the links below. I'm over here stuttering because I'm just so shook by how beautiful this came out. But yeah, um, all the products I use will be listed down below, including the names, the brushes, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys later. God damn it, DJ.